A very warm welcome to our service for Trinity 8. Let us worship God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and poor. Let, Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let, Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let, Let us, us walk his, his way with joy. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let, Let us, us walk his, his way, way with, with joy. joy. You call us together to be your holy people. So we join to give you praise for the joy of our creation, for our redemption in Christ, and for the empowerment of your spirit. Gracious God, fill our hearts with your love and our lives with your glory as we come before you in worship and prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Intimate God, we praise you because you know each one of us, the worries that nag us, the achievements we are proud of, the hopes and expectations that we hold half recognised in our hearts. We praise you for what we know of you, the ways in which you have welcomed and met us, your quiet, constant presence in our lives. And we praise you for what we do not yet know, the mysteries of your creation, the questions that baffle us, the wonders of discovery awaiting us. Unknown, Unknown God, God, may, may we, we be open to meet you with you with in, in unexpected, unexpected ways. ways. Discerning your presence in what is strange to us and seeing the familiar with newly opened eyes. Amen. 
so we make our confession. God of love and mercy, we come before you knowing we are in need of forgiveness. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you in, in our speaking and in our, in our silence, in our thinking and in our thoughtlessness, in our, our actions and in our, our inaction. We have, have sinned against, against you in not loving you with our whole heart, heart and soul and strength, and strength in, in not, not loving, loving our sisters and brothers, brothers in Christ. Sin. Grant us, O Lord, your forgiveness. Restore in us the image of your Son and lead us along the way to your kingdom, to the glory of your name. Amen. O oh God, your heart is full of mercy. May we hear and trust your word to each of us. Your sins are forgiven. May we forgive each other and forgive ourselves. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our collect, almighty and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection both here and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your strength. Teach me your song. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your righteousness If we die to ourselves And live through your death We shall be born Again to be blessed in your love Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your strength, teach me your song, shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves and live through your death, we shall be born again to be blessed in your love. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me be like you my ways. Give me your strength, teach me your song, shelter me in the shadow of your wings, for we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves, We shall be born again to be blessed in your love. We shall be born again to be blessed in your love. The New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 8. 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. If it is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. o Lord. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the baskets and threw away the bad. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today's texts grouped five parables together. The mustard seed, 
the parable of the leaven, the parable of the hidden treasure, the parable of the pearl of great price, and the parable of the dragnet. There are similarities between some of the parables as well as some differences, but as a whole, they together give us a picture of the kingdom of God. But there is so much to glean from these parables that we couldn't possibly exhaust them today. So I've chosen to look at only two of them and to offer you a few thoughts on the mustard seed and the leaven. I'm sure you'll find it interesting to look at the others in the quietness of your own homes. The parable of the mustard seed takes a lesson from common experience. Unlike the mustard which gives flavour to meat and salad, the mustard tree was a common weed in Palestine. No one would sell everything he had to buy a mustard tree. So why does Jesus tell the parable? I think one explanation is that one of the characteristics of the mustard tree was its tiny seeds. It's hard to believe that such a tiny seed could produce this large shrub, which could give shelter to the great birds. We might summarise this with one of our proverbs, great things come from small beginnings. If this explanation is followed, then it is an illustration of how the church would grow to a great size by the work of the disciples and those who followed them. But I think there is more to bring out in this parable. Although the mustard tree was useless to the Jews, it was quite useful for the birds. The birds built their nest there and raised their young. Generally speaking, most of the birds were unclean and also useless to the Jews for food. The birds who nested in the mustard tree were probably the same. So what is Jesus alluding to? Well, the inclusion of the Gentiles into the new Israel is a major theme in Matthew. And he's clear that the Gentiles were also seen to be unclean. It's likely then that this could be an allusion to the Gentiles coming to find rest in the tree, becoming part of the Christian movement. It was a different tree than the palms and figs and olives which characterised Israel. But we're reminded that God told Peter not to call unclean that which God has cleansed. Perhaps then Matthew's understanding of this parable is to show that Jews and Gentiles would be incorporated into a new tree, the tree of life in Christ. The parable of the leaven has a twist in it as well. Leaven was often used as a metaphor for sin. You could see the action of leaven as a warning not to let sins go unchecked, as they would become the gateway to greater wrongdoing. The Jews at Passover would carefully search for and remove all leaven in the house before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They were directly commanded by God to do so in the book of Exodus. But leaven was useful as well when taken in its normal sense. It made bread tastier and fluffier. The Jews certainly enjoyed their leavened bread for most of the year. Unleavened bread was dry and tough. The purpose of it was to remind Israel that once life was hard for them in the wilderness where God rescued them. Jesus used leaven in a positive way in this parable. It mirrors the mustard seed in that yeast is tiny. Compared to three measures of bread, it was a small ingredient. Usually a little dough was left unbaked so the yeast could grow. A piece of this old batch of dough was then added to the new dough. The bread would be thoroughly mixed so the yeast could do its work and soon the entire batch of dough rose and was ready to be baked. Like the mustard seed, one can see the great, that great things come from little beginnings. What it, what it added is that the little of the, a little of the old would be mixed up in with the new to produce the final result. It would be one lump of Jew and Gentile together. Christian growth happens when each individual, according to the way of God, does what God asks of them. In, it starts from when a, gene, a seed germinates in the hearts and mind of a person. Often it is silent too, and we're not able to see the roots beginning to grow in another person. 
just as we are not able to hear a flower growing until it appears before us. What we do today, how we live today, may take a long time to become evident. We may never know what influence we have had. A couple of years ago, I met a mother of a girl who was in my Christian youth group going back more than 30 years. Margaret told me that her daughter had said that without my help all those years ago, she would never have become a Christian. Since then, she's had two children who she also brings up as part of the church. It was only by chance I found that out. I'd often wondered what happened in the lives of those kids I spent so much time with year after year. We need to continue to be witnesses, even if we don't see anything happening. God works in his own time. There are many historical happenings which give us a glimpse of how small things can grow out of all proportion when God finds someone to run with it. One example is that of the work of one man, William Wilberforce. After reading, reading an exposure of the slave trade and a conversation with the then Prime Minister Pitt, a seed was sown in Wilberforce's mind and that idea changed the lives of thousands of people. When a seed is sown and finds someone willing to devote themselves to it, miracles happen. A group of young people were discussing how the Christian gospel could be spread. They spoke of giving pamphlets and books. And then a girl originally from Africa spoke up. She said, when we want to take Christianity to one of our villagers in Africa, we didn't send literature. We asked a Christian family to move into the village and they made that, Christ that village Christian by living there. Again and again, it has been the witness of one individual which has brought Christianity to a group. One of the great stories of the Christian church is of Telemachus, another individual who made an enormous difference in the world. He was a hermit of the desert, but God told him to go to Rome. Rome was nominally Christian, but even in Rome the gladiatorial games went on in which men fought with each other and crowds roared for the lust of blood. Telemachus found his way to the games. 80,000 people were there to, uh, to spectate. He was horrified. Were these men who were slaughtering each other not also children of God? He leapt from his seat right into the arena and stood between the gladiators. He was tossed aside. He came back. The crowd were angry, they began to stone him, but still he struggled back between the gladiators. The prefect's command rang out, a sword flashed in the sunlight, and Telemachus was dead. And then suddenly, there was a hush. Suddenly the crowd realised what had happened. A holy man lay dead. Something happened that day in Rome. There were never any other gladiatorial games ever again. The one man had let loose something by his death that cleansed an empire from a sin. Someone must begin to change things, not just in a nation, but in a home or a place of work. Should change begin, no one knows where it will end. And so the message for today's gospel is this. We need to persist in our work and not grow discouraged. The church had humble beginnings and great things came. And an even greater future awaits all of us, even if it looks like the church here in the UK is in sharp decline and everywhere else suffering great persecution. God has a plan and we are called to play our part. Amen.
so we pray. The response to hear us is, hear us, good Lord. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for Archbishop Stephen, for Bishop John, and for those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. Give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good, good Lord. Lord. We pray for our villages, for those who live and work here, and for those who visit, especially over the summer, that they would find here a place of refreshment and peace. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good, good Lord. Lord. We pray for those who do not believe and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to the knowledge of your love in Christ. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear or sickness. Especially we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all refugees. And we pray for those in hospital or in hospice. And for those who are sick at home and the people who care for them. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ and we rejoice with St Edith, St Andrew, St Mary and all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Hear us, hear, hear us, us good, good Lord. Lord. And we commend all our prayers to you as we pray for the coming of your kingdom. Our Father, Father which, which art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we pray for God's blessing upon ourselves and all those whom we know and all those whom we love. Let us go out into the world as bringers of love, as makers of peace, as messengers of hope, knowing that the blessing of God, the source of life, of Jesus Christ, the way to life, and of the Holy Spirit, the sustainer of life, is with us today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in love and joy and peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
And it would be a tragedy for me to turn away All my needs you have supplied When I was dead you gave me life How could I not give it away so